A very warm welcome to you from Equa Marketing. This presentation is brought to you by Equa.com, a leader in digital marketing. Hello everyone. Welcome to another amazing episode of the Growing Dentist Podcast Show. Today I have one of the one of the first people to start podcasting in dentistry. Uh, of course, you all know him. Uh, his website is called thepassionatedentist.com, thepassionatedentist.com. He's Dr. Salib, and uh, he's also um, the proud owner of Chapel Hill Advanced Dentistry.com. Dr. Salib, welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me on the show. This is, this is kind of cool. Uh, you know, I, I, I do have my own podcast, The Passionate Dentist, and um, I'm taking a bit of a hiatus right now from it because, as I'm trying to um, get my practice and my family and my life in order. And it's nice to be on a on another podcast and recording again. So it you know it's been a it's been a, a couple of months since I recorded anything, but you know, so this is fun. So thanks for having me. Yeah, and thank you for you know making us your first in two months. I mean, especially you know someone like you, you know, who kind of pioneered uh, podcasting in dentistry. Um, I don't think there were too many people you know who who did it before you got on, you know got onto it. It's, so. You know, I'm, first of all, I'm glad you didn't say I'm the grandfather of uh, podcasting, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, or I guess the word pioneer is okay. But pioneer almost uh, means that I kind of reinvent, invented something, or started something. So, uh, but that is unfortunately not true. But uh, because I've been listening to podcasts, uh, just non-dental podcasts, for almost ten years now, maybe even longer, to be honest. And at some point. In 2013, I started investigating, saying, "I wonder if there are any dental podcasts." And there was also just there was just two at the time, and and they're both uh, my friends right now, Gary Takis and, and David Maloli in, um, in in Colorado. And they, Gary is uh, Gary is in um, Arizona. Anyway, and um, but anyway, so I, those are the only ones out there, and I was listening to them. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I like their format, and I, I just wanted to change it a little bit, make it slightly different. And so one was a thriving dentist. The other one was a relentless dentist. So I decided I needed another dentist, some podcast name. And my wife said, well, you know, what do you, what do you want to make this about? And I said, well, it's about people who are passionate about dentistry. She says, why don't you call it the passionate dentist? And I thought it was great. So my wife is the one that came up with the name. So, yes, I've been doing it since January 2014. You know, mostly, mostly, you know, almost every week I used to release an episode. But like I said, it's been a couple of months since I released one. But I'll release more. I'll release more soon. Yeah. I mean, um, what did you uh, what did you notice over the years? Like what has changed? And, and what do you think about podcasting in general? I mean, if you are a, if you are a dentist, um, you know, trying to help other dentists. And then, of course, if you're a dentist trying to you know, uh, grow your patient base? Well, I don't think um, podcasting is really going to help directly in um, getting more patients. But, but it does create an interesting online presence. So when people start searching you, they can, start, they can find you on the web and saying, oh, there's the, the passionate dentist. So it adds a little bit of credibility to you uh, from patient's perspective, but only if they look for it. And um, as I was saying earlier, it's really not a good idea to have a dental podcast for the patients unless you're some kind of a serious comedian who is so funny that you just happen to be a dentist and you make dental jokes, but, but the, the draw is not the dentistry. The draw is the comedy or some other, some other form of communication. But, but drawing the public in is very difficult. But, so that's one of the reasons why I started the Passion and Dentist podcast, which was not for the patients. They're, they're really for other dentists, basically. And to be honest, I mean, yeah, I mean, originally it would be nice to gather more patients out of this, but it's kind of a hobby, and I like talking to other dentists. Uh, right. I mean, see, the thing is, you're not a dentist, and you're, you're a marketing guy. You're talking to people all over the world all the time. Us, us dentists, we're stuck in our little cubicles and our little operatories, and we're running around from one patient to the other. And we get isolated. And when you 
create a podcast, you get to talk to kind of, you know, really interesting people. And, uh, and so, so it helps you as a, or it helps me as a dentist to become a better dentist because I'm constantly talking to other dentists and we don't judge each other. You know, I don't judge them. Maybe they judge me, but I don't judge them. Right. It makes me a better dentist. And, you know, perhaps it adds credibility, you know, to, to, to patients and stuff like that. I'm not sure. You know, um, I'm a marketing guy, like you said, and I've been thinking about, you know, the marketing implications of this. And I think um, marketing in, in three you know, sentences, getting more people to know you, like you and trust you mm-hmm. and uh, know you kind of says, you know, they Google, um, you know, various things. Let's say they're looking for uh, veneers and you show up. That's one way of knowing. Or uh, a friend mentioned your name, you know, when you're talking to the friend about X, Y, Z, that's knowing. And then liking is, um, I love Robert Cialdini. Have you heard of Robert Cialdini by any chance? I know the name, but I can't say I know who it is. Yeah, so he's a behavioral uh, psychologist and he wrote a book, uh, two books. First one was called Influence and that was in the 80s and it became a bestseller and, um, you know, translated into so many languages and uh, he studied humans and uh, he, you know tens of thousands of people and he noticed there are six principles when applied correctly it increases the chances of you being able to influence them 300 to 400 mm-hmm. percent and then recently after he wrote that book he became the influence guy and he got called to work with corporations and so he studied even more and then he wrote a new book uh, that just came out, a New York Times bestseller called Presuasion. And in that oh, book... Presuasion, yes. I know, that's, that's why I know. Yes, yes, yes. Right. But I have not read the book. But yeah, keep going. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's an amazing book. And in that book, again, he combines the old six influence principles and he adds a new twist to it. And he says, it's all about the moment. So right now, um, let's mm-hmm. say, um, you know, you and I are talking and, and, and I say, hey, you know, mm-hmm. Did you like that, um, you know, um, that, uh, that gift I sent you? And you're like, oh, it's the best. And, you know, we had the wine and it's awesome. And, you know, we, you start talking about the wine that I just sent you. At that moment, you're being appreciative and so forth. And it's uh, reciprocity is one of his six principles. At that moment, if I say, hey, you know, can you do me a tiny favor? Can you make a phone call to so-and-so and, you know, help me out with this? At that moment... Sure you're going to say yes. So he's, he realized it's not reciprocity alone, but it's using the moments. Um, mm. and, um, and some of his six principles you alluded to, and that's why it triggered in my brain. Um, and one is called authority. So, you know, you go on Oprah and Oprah says, this is the best book ever. You should read it. Three million copies sold, right? Because right. humans, we believe in authority. You are an authority. When somebody comes on your show and they talk about dot, 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 um, and they put it on their website, oh, yeah, you know, Dr. Salib thinks this is interesting. So it must be interesting, right? So you have become an authority in the, you know, among dentists. So it's a very, very powerful thing. I mean, authority works. I mean, that's why you see all these big name, you know, consulting companies paying these authority figures, you know, a lot of money. Because when they say, yeah, this is great, people believe it. I mean, it's just the way humans are wired, right? Um, The next principle he talks about is liking. So, you know, like I have heard people say, you know, I know you. And I'm like, where did we meet? Oh, well, well, I never met you, but I keep listening to your podcast or I keep seeing your videos, right? And I think the lines of real life connections is blurring. And a lot of people can see, you know, apprentice and like Donald Trump, even though they've never met Donald Trump. A lot of people sure, can, sure. you know, listen to you explain something and being friendly and being authentic and like you, even though they have never met you. So um, so one of the things we kind of, you know, being a marketing company, we try to, you know, take the podcast and do more with it. So we take a quote from you and make it into an infographic and put it out there. Right mm-hmm. now, more people. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's a very insightful comment. And then, of course, you know, they see you as an authority because your name is, you know, as the author of the court. Um, you know, they they start now taking you seriously. And unfortunately, we live in a celebrity culture, so we all want, you know, the person who works on Tom Cruise or you know, 
you know, we all want the best, right? Uh, so authority, liking, so, you know, hearing your voice and becoming familiar. And people tend to do business with those they like, you know, three to one, as opposed to those they don't. It sounds such easy and common sense, but most of us don't think about it because, you know, we are busy, like you said, being dentists or, you know, doing whatever else we do. Um, right. And, and the third principle is social proof. You know, when I first started this podcast, nobody wanted to show up. Then I started getting bigger and bigger names. And now you are here talking to me. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> if, I, if you were the first person who were called, maybe you are a nice guy and you would have said yes. But the chances are probably less. I'm just saying in general. We as humans love social proof. If other people think you are great, you must be great. And that's why reviews online becomes really important, right? You know, and other people think you are an awesome dentist because you have four and five star reviews. Hey, you must be an awesome dentist. So, uh, well, I mean, so so you're so you're right. When it comes to podcasting, um, I guess in a way, it helps my practice through social proof, but only if they hear about it. Right. If, if they don't hear about it, it doesn't really. Um, I mean, if, if they don't know about it, then it doesn't help, unfortunately. But but you know what? I'm not really trying to build a social proof as much as I, like I said. I kind of enjoy talking to dentists, I and mean, I guess I could have really tried hard at monetizing my, my, my podcast, but I never did. Right. And you know what? That's okay because uh, another person I, I really like is Daniel Pink. He wrote a book called Drive, and he talks about three things. One is purpose. I mean, for you, it's all about purpose. You know, you are a passionate dentist. You like to talk to other passionate dentists, and you don't judge them. You just learn from them. You're just always learning, learning, learning. And for you... Just that alone is good enough, right? All the other stuff, you know, it's nice to have, but who cares? You know, you are happier because you're learning from somebody else who's walking on a different, you know, in a different shoes and having a different perspective. And um, yeah, it's very, very interesting. I mean, at the end of the day, humans are like computers. You know, we behave a certain way. Um, meaning, you know, for a computer, you write some instructions, it does certain things. We are like that, you know. Uh, I'm nice to you, you're forced to be nice to me. That's just being part of human, you know, that's being human. You know, it's almost like you feel guilty if you're not nice to me when I'm nice to you. Right, right, of course. It's, it's, it's interesting. Yeah, the well, reason I brought it up thing, is... Um, speaking of marketing, one yeah. of the things we do is we ask people for like referrals and stuff. We actually hand them, you know, five dollar gift cards to Starbucks or a local coffee shop or something like that. And um it's it's the, you know, I'm going to give you a gift and hopefully you'll kinda of help me out type of thing. But it's without really pushing them on that. It's just here's a gift, you know, we appreciate you. Here's a gift. Please give this to one of your friends if, because we we like you, we like uh, patients like you, we want, and people like you tend to hang out with other people like you. So if you give this one of your friends who needs a dentist, we would really appreciate it. And there's a little card attached to it, a little Starbucks card. And that goes a long way with people. It goes a long way. Um, yeah, even though it may sound like five bucks is a lot, but think about it. If you give 20 of them away, that's $100. One patient, most people would, would die to get a new patient in for $100. So right. It's nothing really. Um, so what, what you're saying is when, when you hand it to somebody who already likes you and they refer you a patient, that patient comes in preheated and they already like you too because they've looked you up. The other person has talked with social proof. And, um, and, and the first patient feels like they owe you something because you gave him a small little gift. Exactly. So I, I get it. So all, all this marketing is working together. But, yeah, I'll give you a classic example of exactly what you said. Um, we had clients for the longest time who were struggling to get positive reviews. And it's, the reason is they all love the dentist and they'll say, yes, yes, I'll do it when I get home. But the problem is when they get home, life becomes more important. So out of every 20 people who say yes, only one will actually write the review. So we kind of developed a tool called Grow My Reviews and it's a texting tool. And what it does is, and I would you know, I'll send you one, you can just use it. Um, what it does is um, it um, 
allows you to say somebody's giving you a compliment. They're telling you, hygienist, you know what? My gums don't bleed anymore. At that moment, right. you feel something like, I really appreciate your compliment. You made my day. I'm going to ask you for a tiny favor. Do you mind if I send you a quick text? Can you just write it? It'll only take you a minute. So you're using that moment of reciprocity. Sure. That's the critical point. You have to use that moment and you have to make them do it at that moment. You know what I mean? Because right. otherwise, yes, they will want to do it. They're good people. But when they go home, that moment is no longer that powerful anymore. Right? Mm -hmm. And um, so one of his principles is reciprocity. The other one is commitment by saying yes and using that moment. So text shows up, you know, one minute later because you ask them for their cell phone. They're making a second commitment by giving the cell phone. Now they made two commitments. They get the text. They do it right then and there. So these doctors who were struggling, struggling with postcards and emails and you name it, because they were not using the moment, all of a sudden started getting all these positive reviews. And um, I'm just thinking out loud what you just told me. You gave me an idea. You know, when somebody's being appreciative, you know, it's like the Starbucks creating that appreciation, right? But here it's much more sincere and genuine. You need to give them something and say, hey, I, this is awesome. You made my day. Thank you. Here's a Starbucks card. You know what? Oh, by the way, here is also a gift card to give to your buddies, right? Because we love having you. I'm sure your buddies are like you. So give them a gift card. I, I, I don't know if, if you can do this. I'm just thinking out loud here, but, um, you know, well, I mean, so, so give, giving them a gift card, um, is, is, uh, I mean, so I, those things are a little tricky with, di with different states because the laws are a little different. No, no, I'm, I'm not saying give them a gift card, give them the Starbucks card. So let's say, right, right, say, right. you know, my hygiene, you know, I'm not bleeding. So, you know, you made my day, you know what, here is a gift from us. Here's a Starbucks sure. card for you, right? And oh, by the way, can you give a gift card to the new patient or no? Like what I mean is, yeah. um, you know, come into our office and get $100 off. Right, right. Well, that's, I mean, I, I fully understand. I mean, that's, and that's kind of what we do. That's kind of what we do in our practice right now. That's one of our um, sources of new patients. And, um, and this helps. Uh, this helps because one of the things um, a lot of us dentists have are patients that we get that we really don't want. See, right. that's the thing. <laughs> you know, the troublemakers, the ones that don't pay, the ones that don't want x-rays, the ones that, you know. And so when you, when you find a patient that you like and they send you other patients, a lot of times they send patients that are very similar to them. And so it works. it works very well. I mean, Yes, this is obviously not your typical digital marketing, um, but 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 as when you add it to the whole Google reviews and 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 the online presence, when you add it to that, it adds a certain human touch element to this all. I mean, this is all good old fashioned stuff of asking your clients or asking your patients for referrals. It's humbling. It's tricky to do this, but but when you when you learn to do it well, it works very well for you. Also, it works, with, and, and the patients are a lot of times happy to do that. Right. Because and, and, they feel like they're helping their friend and they're helping you because they like you and you like them type of thing. It's, it's one of these, but obviously only with, <laughs> with the patients that you like. <laughs> you want more of those patients. Basically. Yeah. I'm glad you brought up this point about patients you like. So I've been thinking a lot about this and I noticed there are a few mindsets of the people I like, right? Because they're kind of like me. First mindset is we all want others like us. The first mindset of my best clients are, they are growth oriented, right? They're always looking to grow. Second mindset is they appreciate themselves and others. They always look at the half full side of life. You know, yes, they have bad days, but they don't get down by the bad days and they don't point the finger at somebody. They say, okay, what's the opportunity right. in this? What's the silver lining? The third thing I noticed is they're all team players. They don't try to be everything to everybody. They surround themselves with other A players, you know, the office manager is amazing. Their, you know, their accountant is amazing. They tend to surround themselves with amazing players and they delegate and they, they respect each other and they work well. So I realized, why am I wasting my time with somebody who never appreciates? Like if I talk to a client or a potential client and he says, oh, uh, I, you know, this is my new office manager. She has been with me six months. My first question is, okay. Uh, how long was your last office manager with you? Just kind of curious. And oh, yeah, she was there for four months. Then 
I'm like, I don't want to work with you because this is not going to go anywhere, you know, because right. I've been through the pain. So one of the points maybe you could think about, and I'm sure others could is, what are the attributes of your best clients, the mindsets? Because once you nail that, you just want, you're looking for more people like that, right? So your marketing right. could be, let's say, if, you're, if, you're mind, if, if, if the mindset of your clients are health conscious people, they, they're taking control of their health and you know, they want to learn more about health. You, know, you could provide information where they can learn about health, you know, the connection mm-hmm. between their oral health and their systemic health. I, I'm just using that as an example or any, anything at all, right? Oh, that's um, a good example. Right, because you know there are people who will walk into a you know a Whole Foods and pay five times or three times more for apple, you know, because for them health is important and paying sure. for health is important, right? On the other hand, there are a lot of people who want. So why are you wasting your time going after the people who don't think health is that big of a deal? I mean, if that's your business, I'm not saying you should do this or you shouldn't do this, but. You know. Well, no, but you know, you, you, you alluded to something a minute ago, and you basically said you know, trying, trying to find the patients that you like, and what, what, what you were describing there, the avatar is what I, I call it the avatar, or I've heard this term many times. And, and the word avatar is not, you know, I'm not talking about the movie, but an avatar is basically the absolute perfect patient. If you describe that patient as, great, as, as much detail as you can, then you focus your marketing onto that person, that's the best way to do it. Absolutely. Because, you know what? 20 years ago, we couldn't do that. Before Facebook, that, that does all this uh, profiling and, and, and Google that does all this profiling and understands all these people and what they want and so forth. The, you couldn't do that. In, in the past, it was very hard to focus it like that. Nowadays, it's very easy to focus it. And, and what you want to do is focus to the to, to your crew, uh, crew of patients or your avatar, basically. So, but, but to do that, you have to really, really identify that person very well. I mean, is it a man or a woman? What's the age? What kind of dental history do they have? Are they in pain? Are they not in pain? Right. Are they wealthy or not? You have to ask all these questions. What kind of car do they drive? You know, all of these things. And, and, and so and the more... The more uh, you identify the easier it is to, to surround yourself with those kinds of patients. Now, it, you may not get your phone ringing like crazy all day long, but when they do ring, a lot of times that patient is your perfect patient, basically. Exactly. So you may not get 30 new patients. You might just get five in a month, but if it's five patients at $20,000 of, of production each, that's better than getting 30 patients of, of, of $200 each. You see what I mean? Absolutely, doctor. I totally agree. I, and I think uh, a phrase I would use is, who do you want to be a hero to, right? Because sure. if you try to be a hero to everybody, you will end up becoming nothing to nobody. Right. So having that clear picture on who do you want to be a hero to, I want to be a hero to, you know, like I was talking to a dentist and uh, she said, I want to be a hero to uh, a mom who has teenagers. And I'm like, why? She's like, well, they're starting to think about taking care of their health, right? Uh, because now the kids are leaving home and they're starting to focus on them, themselves. And also they have money by that time and you know, they're well off. You know, sure. like, typically they're white collar. I want to be a hero to that person. Okay, great. So how do you be a hero to that person? What do they like? Mm-hmm. Well, um, they like an elegant office. They want things to be done in a consistent manner. You know, um, they are starting to read up on health and, you know, so they, they are into learning about health. So they want to be able to talk to me about health and, you know, and maybe we can do some videos about health because they're into those things. So they start looking at me as the authority who can teach them about health. So one of the sure. things you, you kind of mentioned this and I didn't talk about it then, but we came up with something called Doctor and Me or TV, which is pretty much a podcast like you and I are talking right now. And then we right. break it into video clips, but mm. the audience is the patient, right? So right now we are talking about, you know, um, the oral systemic connection, and that's a two minute clip, for example, right? Now what happens is that clip is shared on Facebook, you know, and the way it works is we take your voice and we put the branding of Dr. Media TV along with 
you are branding so now you have authority now you are somebody because you're featured on a third party you know program um we also put your picture you know your nice picture with your wife so now they kind of feel like they know you even though they have never met you so they're more open to you versus your competition they don't know what he looks like they don't know his voice you know what i mean and 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 right. it's, it's a very simple game like you know if you look at the u.s elections people had to like one candidate more than the other that's it you know what i mean they don't have to yeah. love you they just have to like you more that's it so sure. If you give them ways to like you more, um, so anyways, I, I'm just rambling on. But I, I, I hope no, no, I, no. What, what you're what you're saying is correct, um, and, uh, and they they gotta like you more. I mean, when it comes to the election, though, it's it's more like they they need to hate the other one more. <laughs> I know, I know, and and yeah, and and a lot of people. This is true for elections or business. They don't make. You know, logical decisions. They make emotional decisions. What I mean is, right, right, right. Uh, you know, like, um, you know, like uh, they don't sit with a checklist and you know write down your pros and the other person pros and cons and say, oh, I'm going to vote. For Nobody does that, right? It's a gut feel, and the gut feel comes from a lot of times. Who do I like? Who do I relate to? I mean, that's why they talk about, you know, who do you want to have a beer with, right? That's why you see all these politicians kissing babies and, you know, uh, you know going hunting you know just because i like to hunt you like to hunt so we like each other you know sure. that kind well, of I mean, exactly people relate to other people like them basically. exactly get that, right of and uh, and i think is i mean i know that you're you're in a very interesting situation because i mean people people say dentistry is changing and indeed it is but nothing is changing as fast as <laughs> Marketing has changed oh, yeah. in the last ten years. I mean, you 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 have such an amazingly uh, fast moving target. I don't know how you guys do it, to be honest. I really we have no idea how you guys do it. It's just the target is moving so fast in so many directions that it baffles me that you guys can actually have a profession like this. Yeah, I mean, um, it is fascinating. I guess it all depends on each person. I like new things, so for me, uh, I love it. So. What excites me is like we can grow a hundred times in two years. So some of our products, we have something called fans choice. And you talked about, you know, who's your avatar, right? And the way right. we did it is, you know, we like to find simple solutions. So we said, uh, we, so you are a business owner, you get a page on fanschoice.org. And we ask a simple question. Why are you a, you a fan of Dr. Salib? That's it. Most right. people will tell you the same thing. And this is the funny part. All your best customers will give you pretty much four reasons. Some might give you three of those four, but pretty much they're all saying the same thing. So mm. this, this is not complicated, especially for somebody like you who have been in practice for a long time. Just ask them that question. Why are you a fan of my business, right? Or why, no, why do you like me, right? And write down what they're saying, and they will all say the same things. So now what you have to do is, you know, you have to make sure you are consistent, not just you personally, but your team, your website, you know, the phone, everything is consistent in delivering those same things. Second, you have to get the word out, right? So one of the ways we do it is we take your fan, we call it a fan review, put it on Facebook. So other people who are looking for that, you know, uh, whatever dot, 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 right? Dot, dot, dot could be, you know, he's always at the cutting edge. For some people that's important. For others, it could be, well, they, I'm afraid of going to the dentist. Only after I started going to this doctor, you know, I love going there. They make me feel at home and, you know, they're so friendly. And for other people, you know, it could be, um, you know, uh, I, 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 I look, I appreciate quality. So the office is perfect. They are, you know, the doctor's work is perfect. You know what I mean? Like I have a client in California. He does these $50,000 cases and most of his clients are these engineers and they, they love perfection. So if you go to his right. website, there are these case studies, you know, dissecting every case, you know, step one, step two, step three. And these engineers, they're like, wow, I, this guy's like me, right? And uh, I like science, I like perfection. So I don't care giving you 50,000 bucks because that's what I'm looking for. Sure. And, uh, 
so it's interesting, you know, it's, um, anyways, I, I, I'm really enjoying talking to you because, you know, you, you have so much knowledge and, uh, um, so well, let's I mean, I'm not perfect, you know, like, like I said, it's, it's, it's uh, I, I just have a, a pretty good team that I work with all the time. I think that's what it is. Right. Um, it's, and it's, and, and like I said, I mean, that, that's the problem. It, it's constantly changing. Yeah. You know, that's very true. Um, but this is the secret for any successful business that I've found. The people who are extremely successful, they find what doesn't change. Take a look at Jeff Bezos, right? We always will want cheaper prices, right? I don't think we'll ever, like if Jeff, if Jeff comes and says, well, nobody's going to go, go to Jeff Bezos and say, well, you know, I'm only paying $3 for dot, dot, dot. Can I pay $7, right? So he sure. built a business on something that never changes, right? Now, it doesn't mean that you have to build a business on cheaper prices. Then he knows that people want selection. So, okay, they have 10 million things and it's going to 100 million, et cetera, right? They want faster service. Again, he gives it to them, right? So the question is, what are things that never change? And I think as far as humans are concerned, I think we all want significance, right? You know, we all want to feel important. I mean, people commit suicides because they don't think they're important anymore. They don't think they are needed anymore, right? Um, and um, Tony Robbins was sharing a story about uh, Steve Wynn and his entire business is by giving the top 50,000, you know, um, high rollers significance. You know, he flies them in a private jet. He gives them the best suite and they, they drop 15 million, but they thank Steve Wynn for making them feel like a rock star. You know what I mean? Um, right, right. Because at home, he's not that much of a VIP. Nobody comes and flies him in a private jet and, you know, takes care of him like he's the king. But here he is the king. So he doesn't care that he lost $15 million. But, but it's a real human need. And the question is, how can a dentist give somebody significance, right? Uh, I mean, that's an interesting question. I don't know what the answer is. But I think, you know, by listening to them, like some of the best dentists, they never tell patients what they need they find out what patients want and then they give it to them you know and and that's um and that's and, and to do that and i've you know i've preached this many times uh, on my podcast saying it's it's very very rare when you can look at a patient who has no perception of need and switch them to somebody who want to spend fifty thousand dollars or twenty thousand dollars or one thousand dollars for that matter on their teeth right. in their mouth and so and so the the best thing you can do the best thing you can do is spend a little bit of time doing you know doing your best exam telling people what you see and then say you know is there anything you want to do about all this stuff and and then start having a conversation with the patient and and this you know this, this conversation and then and if the patient says no then you say things like well you know just so you know these things do concern me and at some point this is going to become a problem for you and I'll take care of it when that happens but I just don't want you to have any problem and then a lot of times if the patient doesn't want to talk anymore you stop and then, and then you just wait another six months or a year most of my patients by the way who who get uh, a, a lot of you know large dentistry. They've been my patients for three to five years when they start getting these large cases. I've, you know, I've basically groomed them, got them ready, talked to them about this, and they slowly become aware of what's going on in their mouth. And then when, you, when they want it, you give it to them, basically. But um, so, this, so one of the things that's, that's been um, bothering me is all these courses out there about case acceptance. And and they do all these courses about the hard sell. You know, it's like selling a car if you do it right now or you do it today or never or something like that. And, I mean, I, I get that. And, and that, that language sounds very, very appealing to new graduates who are just graduating. and They, they need to make a lot of money really quick. Right. And they attend these courses. They pay thousands of dollars to attend these courses, but they don't really – they're not able to apply it. They tend to put an uh, un abnormal pressure on their patients. And so – it's it's really not good for them. And so, um, the, what, what you're saying about giving patients what they want is is the key of it. 
and what and and before they know what they want, you got to help them understand what they need and what they want. You, you, you first have to help them. Right. And, and that takes a long. Sometimes it takes years to do that, and sometimes it never happens, and sometimes it happens within two visits, basically. Right. One question I use, and you might find it interesting, and I want you to take on it is. I ask something like uh, what I call a three year question. If you and I are talking in three years, for you to be happy with me as your dentist, what should happen to your smile and your overall health, right? Sure. And then they'll start talking and you, you might find, you know what, they know about that um, implant they might need, but right now what's bugging them is their gum disease because they, they had somebody in their family die of, you know, diabetes, right? right. Um, um, so now you turn this whole thing around and when you're starting to talk about their problems, you finish your examination, you can talk in their own language because sure. this is the number one problem we have, right? We talk about liking and Dale Carnegie said it. You want people to like you, be interested in them, right? Oh yeah, of course. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But like you said, nobody cares about you. They care about themselves. Just right. like you care about yourself, they care about themselves. So the person who starts asking questions about what they want and then frames his or her responses you know, in that light, I think not only is, is very successful, but also, um, you know, again, Dale Carnegie quote, he said, the world is full of people who are grabbing and self-seeking. In that world, the rare individual who focuses on helping others get what they want has no competition. And he said it like 60, 70 years ago, and it's as true today as it was 70 years ago. Well, that's because it, it deals with basic human needs. needs. It doesn't exactly. really, it doesn't, it transcends everything about marketing. It transcends exactly. everything about that. It's, it's because it goes back to the absolute basics of human need, nothing more. Right. Anyways, so, uh, and human need, wanting to be cared for and loved and respected and, and all that stuff. I mean, ultimately, you know, what we do as dentists is, you know, I get it. It's teeth and mouth and, and smiles, but that's our tools. What we're really doing is helping people's lives and connecting with them, making them feel good and, 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 um, and treating them like human beings. And that's right. what it is. So Absolutely. I remember, it's funny, I, I was in dental school a long time ago, and, um, and um, I, I, was, uh, I, was, I used to do Taekwondo, I used to do martial arts at the time, and one of the students in the, in the, in the class, we were talking, and, and she said, she's like, so you're, you're, you're in dental school? I was like, yes, I am. And she said, I don't know why anybody would want to drill teeth for a living. And, and I looked at her, I said, I, I don't, you got this all wrong. I said, drilling, te saying that is like saying, like a house builder, his job is to hammer nails. I said, I don't know why anybody would want to hammer nails for a living. Right. So just drilling teeth happens to be just a tool that I use. I help smiles. I bring confidence. I, I make people happy. I, I get them out of pain. I care for them. Right. That's what I do. Just like when you build a house, you build a home. You, you build shelter you build, you you help you help build dreams you do all this other stuff it's not it's not about the teeth it's not about the nail that goes into the wall in a house and and, and the same thing drilling teeth is not the profession that's your that's your tool and, and and it's and it's really really interesting trying to explain this to recent graduates from dental school from dental schools because they don't quite understand this yet i mean they do but they don't quite Grasp the power of of, uh, of of these words when you say it's not about drilling teeth because in dental school when they're when they're trying to graduate they're just trying to drill teeth and, and graduate right they're concentrating on the teeth so I totally I, I totally agree with you I, yeah I mean you're coming on a really good point you know at the end of the day we all want happiness right yeah money gives you options and it may it might make your life a bit better but real happiness comes from relationships comes from purpose right. you know right. helping others i mean um what is that uh, um song by um, you know the guy who won the nobel prize um, bob dylan um oh, yeah. you know he said we all got to serve somebody right i mean which is very true you know like 
kings have to serve somebody everybody has to serve somebody and and if you really study human emotions real happiness comes when you take care of others and you're right dream right. treat is, is just is not what it's about it's about you know giving health it's about giving hope it's about giving happiness right so well i mean it's it's a it's a profession of caring it's not a profession of teeth right right yeah. the teeth te yeah, the teeth are just our tools it's all they are right yeah exactly it's, it's a profession of caring um and 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 th and that's and that's the hardest thing to try to teach people right and uh and, and it's uh and it's not just teaching it it's it's it's, it's one of the hardest things to so I, 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 as, 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 yeah yeah I, I i agree with you i think you know um unfortunately life you have to go through it to learn it like i mean i woke up one day and i thought i had everything that i wanted when i was in my 20s but i was feeling miserable yeah, I get it. it took me like two to three years to figure out real happiness comes from, you know, purpose and in, in hanging out with the kind of people and, you know, learning and growing because that's just who I am, you know. Right. And, um, you know, like I'll do it forever, you know, even when I'm 80 years old because it's just, you know, that's who I am and, you know, I get happiness by helping others. So I guess, unfortunately, it's very hard. It's very, Even if somebody says, yeah, yeah, I get it, but they don't get it till you go through it. <laughs> till you get to that because you know think about it right a young dentist think about thinking about paying off his loan loan you know he's sure. thinking about you know all of these things so this thing kind of gets forgotten because you know he hasn't passed those bridges yet he hasn't passed those levels yet uh, at least that's what happened in my life you know it took me a while to kind of even realize these things or notice these things sure sure and you know and i can't i don't and i don't, I don't blame the young dentist um, and the young right. dentists reach out to me. Young dentists reach out to me all the time for these questions, and I try very hard to help them because I was there. I mean, I was there not too long ago. You know, um, I mean, yeah, I've been a dentist for 22 years now, but you know, I, I was I was struggling just until about five six years ago. I was still struggling, and because I had all this debt and the loans and all this sort of stuff. I mean, granted, I finally paid off my debt. At least my 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 school debt and my uh, my practice debt, but I mean it was a pretty struggle there, and it's hard to see beyond those things. So right. I, I get it. It's hard to see beyond those things. So you know, um, and and it's and it's a and it's a community thing too. So think of it this way: even if even if a student graduates with without any debt, you know, let's say they have a very wealthy parent or something like that, that pays for all their education. They graduate without any debt. They're surrounded by all these other people that do have debt. So the conversation right. revolves around debt, basically, and the struggle. And so, because people hang out with people within, you know, five to 10 years of their age. And so a lot of those people have debt. It's it's very interesting to to see this. I've seen this many times with, with with recent grads, even the ones that have no debt. Basically, they still have certain issues. It's like they almost have to suffer together before they can all learn together. It's an age thing, which is quite frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> which is quite frustrating. So right. So so listen, tell tell me about your company a little bit. I I want to know about your company. Oh uh, yes, so just. A bit about myself. I got fired four times in a row, and then uh, after the fourth time, I decided to go on my own. This is back in two thousand and two, <laughs> and uh, between two thousand and two and two thousand and eight, I made every book under the sun. And I, I like to learn by making mistakes, I guess. Uh, and I always look at life as a blessing in disguise. You know, if I didn't get fired four times in a row, I wouldn't have become an entrepreneur. And then oh. if I didn't fail and almost go bankrupt in two thousand and eight. I wouldn't have learned some of these core lessons, right? You know what Dale Carnegie said, you know, focus on others, get what they want and and so forth. So I look at everything as a as as an opportunity disguised as a problem. That's just my attitude towards life. And I look forward to challenges. It excites me and I just, you know, it rises, you know, like the bigger the challenge, the big you know, the more excited I get. Um so so in 2008, a dentist said, you know, we were about to go under, we were running a business called Busy Moms. And we were really good at online marketing and SEO. He said, why don't you help me, you know, beat 10,000 dentists in Chicago and I want to dominate. 
His name is Dr. Siegel, and um, that's how we got started. And uh, today he's ranking for around 1,000 keywords and, and so forth. But then in 2013, I realized I'm not happy just because I have all these success. So currently we have 180 people. And uh, so I went through a phase of soul searching and kind of try to think about, you know, um, you know, what do I want to do? And I realized I love to create new things. And I set a goal of, uh, you know, not in terms of money, but because I realized money makes you happy for one minute or one day, and then it makes you miserable. So I set a goal of, I want to make thousand times more difference with my team over the next 30 years of my life than I did in the last 10. And the reason I did that is because I love to think totally differently. And I, when you set a thousand X goal, all this, because if you say 10%, you are thinking the same way. When you say thousand times, you are thinking in totally different ways. Right. And, right. Uh, and, and, yeah. They say that's why you want to think really, really big, basically. Right. Because it, it cuts through all the nonsense and all the garbage and gets you to the key points. And most of us, we spend 98% of the things like Pareto's laws, but up the opposite, doing the unnecessary stuff and 2% of the stuff doing the important stuff. The people who are super successful, they spend all their time doing that 2%, right? Mm -hmm. And it kind of was interesting and I loved it. It was just, you know, fun to learn and notice these things. And I love to notice things, you know, like notice humans and notice how we are. And like, I mean, psychology is fascinating, right? I mean, it's about humans. It's about how we operate. It's about how we do things. Um, so that's kind of what I do. So equa.com is my business and uh, we have around a few hundred clients and, uh, and we do all of the marketing for them, SEO, social media. We have broken into 42 teams. And what I notice, notice is uh, uh, you need small teams that are given a focus of becoming the best in the world at that just one piece. Because when you give three people a single goal and say become the best in the world, every day they are improving. If you give them 10 things and say, try to do all 10, they just go through emotions. There's no passion. There's no purpose. So finding the right people with the right passions and giving them the right small team and the small focus is one of the key things I learned about growing, you know, 100 times and so forth. So now I just play. So Equa and, you know, um, that co-business kind of is a cash cow. And then I take that and we come up with new things. So grow my reviews is what tool we came up with and doctor and me is another tool we have something called doctor's choice uh, where thousands of doctors you know write ratings for each other we have something called fans choice where people who love you say why they love you and we use that to you know get more people who love you so uh, yeah so that's kind of what i do in a nutshell i, I hope that's a long answer to a no no that's a, that's a no that's a that's a good answer i mean because you and I said, just started talking about dentistry and stuff, but uh, I think, um, I mean, I, I, my assumption is your listeners already know what you're doing, but I think it's uh, because, I mean, I suppose because I'm a podcaster, I always like to ask people, tell us about yourself a little bit. So here I am asking you, but you're the host of this podcast. So <laughs> it's kind of backwards, but that's okay. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I mean, um, can you tell me a little bit about where you are at? I know you said you, said you took a couple of years break and, uh, um, I mean, a couple of months break. Um, where, where are you at and are you planning to, uh, you know, start your podcasting again? And, you know, what are, what are your thoughts? So, so I'm going to, like, I have an interview, a, a formal recording on Sunday, actually, which is two days from now. Today's Friday. And so... So, you know, what I want to do is, according to my podcast, I want to release, you know, this one episode and then slowly start adding more episodes. But what I don't want to do is go all in or all not. Because and I'm not saying I don't want to go all in with my podcast. I want to slowly ease back into it because I have so many other responsibilities going on in my life right now that I'm having trouble making time for good quality podcasts. And, uh, and so... So where I am right now is everything's still on, everything's running. It's just there's no new new content coming. The website is up, uh, uh, iTunes is still running the way it is. All its media servers are still working. Everything's working. I just there's no new content. But like I said, there'll be some new content real soon. So basically, what I want to do is you know, I'll release this episode probably next week sometime, 
and then and you know and then I'll get another interview and then maybe a few weeks later I'll get another episode and do that and slowly slowly introduce more and more so over the next few months you'll start to see that it might be once a month right now, and then maybe once every two weeks, maybe once every week, you know, maybe once every three weeks. So it'll just kind of slowly trickle back in as I as I ramp up the, the podcast again. I just needed some time off. I really did, and, yeah. and it's not because it's not because podcasting is difficult, and I'm not saying podcasting is easy, but it's honestly because I have I have um, I have really five priorities in my life, and podcasting is number five. Okay, <laughs> in in the, in a row. So if I start making podcasting number two or number three, something else is going to suffer. And I don't want that right now. I really just don't want everything else to suffer. Podcasting, as much as I like it, is not my highest priority. That's all it is. But I do enjoy it. I miss. I love it and I miss it. And so it, it'll come back. It's, right. just, it's just a little bit of time, you know. And that's a really key point you just mentioned, you know. Uh, people who are really good at making decisions, they know what their number one the most important thing is, and Steve Jobs said something like, he says, what's your higher order bit? Every life, every situation, what's the more important thing? And once you are clear on it, you know, your decisions become pretty easy. Right. And, uh, right. And that's, and so podcasting, as much as I love it, is not my number one. It's actually, like I said, it's like number five. Right. And, and, and so right now I, you know, in the past, I had more time. Now I'm concentrating on number two like crazy, uh, which is my practice, basically. Right. And uh, and that's taking a lot of my time. But I don't want to get rid of my, you know, I don't want to, because what happened was la- last year I was podcasting like crazy. I was I was producing one main main episode and two small episodes a week. And, and honestly, my practice suffered. And so... Uh- and I can't have that. My practice is my is my is my livelihood, and and you know I feel like my patients may have suffered, and I just don't want that anymore. So we have to get the business running perfectly, running on all cylinders with good systems and good organization, with good team members, all trained very well. And then you know, and then okay, say so okay, now that it's you know on autopilot, which requires very little um, oversight, I can start doing more podcasting. You know, putting more effort into podcasting, but I'm not going to you know make my practice suffer. So you understand. So yeah, absolutely, doctor. And um, I'm going to you know you, I, I really enjoy this. I'm going to uh, you know uh, give you a gift and ask you for a favor. <laughs> so I'm telling you, I'm sure. <laughs> and the gift is um, you know like I told you, we have doctor and me TV. So I want to do a podcast with you, which is really target, targeting fa- your patients. And we will create eight videos from it. And you can use it on your practice and, you know, pretty much, you know, like we talked about, how do you get more people to like you, right? So using your voice, your thoughts, your ideas, and relevant graphics. And then, of course, use it on your Facebook, Instagram, and everything else. Um, And, you know, we charge around $4,000 for this, but, you know, I really enjoy it. So that's my gift. My favor from you is I would love to have you back on Growing Dentist because I feel talking to you is like, talking to 40 guests or 50 guests because you have talked to all of them. So you tend to, you know, see things not just from one person's point of view, but from different, different sure. people's point of view. So I would love to have you come back and, you know. Um, I, would, I would love to come back. I, you know, I, I mean, everybody loves to talk about themselves, you know, <laughs> including myself. So I don't have a problem you know, sharing my thoughts and especially about the profession, you know. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I want to focus our next episodes, you know, a little bit more broadly. You know, today we talked about, you know, podcasting in general and, you know, big picture stuff. But maybe uh, we can get into specifics and, you know, nail down, you know, what you experience and what did you learn from others. And, you know, so because uh, I think a lot of people are listening to this and uh, and we, we share it socially through, you know, videos and YouTube and Facebook and Instagram. So, you know. So I think uh, the other thing I'm also noticing is um, this might be a good and a bad. In the old days, people had long attention spans. Now they're having smaller and smaller attention spans. So I find more than the podcast, those short video clips to be much more effective because they're looking for that two-minute aha, right? Something they can grab their hands around um, because then they can act on it because, you know, people are busy. They don't have one hour to sit and listen to the whole thing. Uh, And um, so interesting. Um, any any final pieces of advice you want to share with our listeners? 
No, no. I, I think I think we've talked about it. I didn't hold back anything. I mean, some people have an agenda when they um, when they have interviews. I, I really don't have much of an agenda other ones other than saying, you know, thanks for thanks for interviewing me, because this was fun. You know, I, I like doing this. You know, it's, it's, and it's, it's fun being on the other side of the microphone, basically, instead of me interviewing somebody, somebody else is talking to me, and which which I which I enjoy. Right. Yeah, I would love to have you back twice, right? One for Doctor and me, sure. and then one for uh, I would love to. So we'll we'll reach out to you and and if people want to sure. find you, Doctor, you just uh, put a link to the passionatedentist dot com. Is that what you want us to share? Yeah, I mean that's that's my podcast. Um, that's my podcast. It's the the passionate dentist dot com. If they want, you know, if people want my practice website, it's Chapel Hill Advanced Dentistry dot com. That's all it is. It's just because my practice is located in Chapel Hill, Chapel Hill, North Carolina. So it's Chapel Hill Advanced Dentistry dot com or or you know the passionate dentist dot com. So that that's that's just me basically. Perfect. And you are also big on LinkedIn, right? So do people connect with you on LinkedIn or yeah, I mean, link, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, I'm not very active on LinkedIn, but I'm there. I do have an account. Um, and once a week or so, I'll, I'll go in there and accept a bunch of friendships and read a couple of things and for about 10 minutes or so. And then I won't see another for, for another you know, week or so. <laughs> so I'm not really active on, on LinkedIn. I haven't quite figured out exactly how to, how to make LinkedIn a very um, functional thing for, as a dentist. At least for my dental, from for, as a dentist with my patients, basically, I haven't quite figured that out yet. Right. Yeah, I do think. I mean, I've been doing marketing for a long time. I don't think you're going to get new patients from LinkedIn. To be honest. Right. Um, it's like if you want to, let's say, build a consulting business or or a coaching business, helping other dentists, it might be interesting. But right now, you're not doing it, so I don't think at this time it would be that effective. I think ten minutes a week is probably a good amount of time. Yeah, you know, I I keep getting these notifications on my phone, which is kind of funny because, and, and I just kind of ignore them usually. <laughs> I just don't look at, you know, do that. But but I mean, I get it. Um, I mean, I I do see, like I said, I do look at um, LinkedIn, just not as much as I should. Right. Uh, it's just, and it's I will also, not, yeah, no, I'll also take a look at your website and you know give you some tips or whatever. You know, if if I notice anything and. Fine. Very good. Yeah. Well, you know where to reach me. Yeah. And do you want to share any other contact details, Doctor, with um, your audience? No, not really. I mean, if, if anybody wants any other contact, I mean, it's all it's all over my website. And I try to make my website as as uh, as easy to find as possible. I mean, it's Chapel Hill Advanced Dentistry, or if people want to reach me through, um, you know, at passionatedentist.com. My website. My uh, my email is just host at the passionate dentist com or or you know or info at the passionate dentist com. That, that that's really the easiest way to reach me. Perfect. Yeah, we'll put all of this in the show notes so people can easily sure. you know get a hold of you. And uh, thanks a lot for doing what you're doing. And you know you have like more than a hundred episodes, correct, on your passionate yeah. the passionate dentist yeah, yeah. com. Right. But I have a hundred full length episodes in a. And probably equally short, uh, short length episodes. Right. Thank you very much, Dr. Salib. I really enjoyed our conversation today, and I know listeners would have a lot of fun. Thank you very right, much. Thank you so much. I appreciate your time. And uh, I'll look for your emails. Thank you. Thank you.